Now, in order to facilitate good communication, there are certain uh, lines that you should not cross over. Uh, in fact, I, I could divide uh, uh, this area of communication into three spectrums, so to speak, or three, three avenues. There would be the uh, frigid zone, the temperate zone, and the torrid zone. And good communication occurs at the temperate zone. Now, what I mean is this. The tor the, uh, I'll take the frigid zone first. The frigid zone occurs when you begin trying to communicate with someone and uh, you hit upon a subject that they're not interested in or you do it in such a way that you tend to ignore their importance. You begin to uh, praise yourself. You are so egocentric that you fail to notice that they also are egocentric, and the consequence is that you just uh, sort of uh, lord it over them, you, uh, you become a braggart, or you, you talk too loudly, you don't make it a, an easy thing for them to tune in with you, and when you do this, you begin to bore people. And that creates a dropping in temperature, and you're moving into the frigid zone. When people are bored, their attention is going to go someplace else. They're going to begin looking at their watches. They're going to begin yawning. They're going to begin looking for some way to escape from you. And that's not a good way to begin and to continue a good communication avenue. Now, the other area that you want to avoid is the torrid zone. And what happens here is that uh, you may start using words or you may get into an area of communication that although it may be vital to you, you, you may be doing it in such a way that you tend to antagonize the other person. You have reached what we could call his hot button. Uh, he's getting angry. And the minute a person begins to get angry as a result of your communication efforts, uh, he's not interested in hearing anything more that you've got to say. He's interested in saying something back to you. In fact, he wants to take you on now. He doesn't want to communicate with you. He probably wants to hit you. <laughs> and and so the, the room is heating up. You're in a torrid area, and communication of ideas is, is being narrowed right down to a, a motivational factor where he's either going to want to get away from you or he's going to want to hit you or do something to you. He's no longer getting the message. He wants to give a message and his message is going to be unpleasant. Well, these are areas you want to avoid. Good communication avoids both the torrid and the frigid zone. You move into the temperate area. And by doing this, you, you practice good manners. You realize that you're talking to another human being who probably knows more than you do in many areas, is just as sensitive as you are, and has got as many things to say as you have, and perhaps could even say them better than you are saying them. Now, when you get that attitude, and then get their attention, and operate gently within an area that avoids the extreme pressure of excessive heat or excessive chill, you can get a two-way communication going, and it becomes a great joy. There's an unfolding that occurs uh, between both communicants. It's one of the most vital and deeply meaningful things that we can do is to enter into a real exchange with another party who is being assisted by you to that same type of exchange. I, I recall an instance, it's quite vivid from my early uh, childhood. Well, I wasn't really a child. I was about 15, I recall, at the time. And uh, my mother had a friend, uh, an older woman, to me, a vastly older woman. She was probably in her 40s. But uh, <laughs> uh, to me, she was uh, very elderly. And uh, she used to come to visit us on occasion and uh, spend the night. And uh, she lived in a, a, quite away from our home, and the trip was so long that she couldn't uh, just come and go in one day back in those days, so she had to come to stay overnight. And I, I remember I always looked forward with great eagerness to her coming because this girl, I call her a girl now, she's just a youngster. Uh, anyway, <laughs> she had a facility for communication that was beautiful. What she did... The minute anybody showed up and uh, 
and, and wanted to talk to her, she immediately dropped everything else and focused on you with her mouth slightly open and her eyes sparkling, looking right at you as though what you had to say was at least on the level of holy writ. I mean, nothing could have been more important than what I wanted to say to her when she showed up. At least she conveyed that impression. I thought she was great. So did everybody in the family. We all thought that she took a special interest in each one of us personally. Now that I look back at it, I'm not sure she took any special interest in any of us. But she was good at communicating. And as I look back, I don't think she ever lectured me at any time. Almost everybody else did, but I don't think she ever did. At least I can't remember it. And yet I can remember learning things from her. So she must have had a very subtle way of making the exchange a two-way street that always built me up. And I loved it. She made me important. She was at once sympathetic, eager. Uh, there was a ready smile, a, 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 uh, an eagerness, a willingness to laugh, to be amused, and yet uh, also a, a, a deep feeling of sympathy and rapport so that you felt she understood. Oh, this gal was great as a communicator. And you know, I speak of her because... Thinking back, I've only found two or three more in my lifetime that were as good as that. And fundamentally, it was this ability of tying in on an attention wavelength, keeping out of the frigid and the torrid zones, and then just opening up and being a free recipient of ideas uh, uh, and bouncing them back, as I'm sure she did, and uh, th this was a very rewarding experience. It's something we can do and should do.